So we're in Lougheed House, which now operates as a historic site and museum. It was built in 1891, so it's 125 years old this year. But back during World War II, uh, this house served as an army barracks for the Canadian Women's Army Corps from 1942 to 1946. And the reason they were unique is because it was its own separate corps run by women, had its own um, you know, policies and manuals and things like that. So they were their own autonomous corps. I decided to join the Army Corps because I had two brothers that were overseas. And I, if they could do it, I could do it. And so that's what that and the fact that there was a beastly, rumbly tractor on my dad's farm that every time you went around a field with it, you had to remodel the thing. And I was so disgusted with that tractor. I was going to get away from it one way or the other. <laughs> well, look at Beth Clark. I've known her since we went to high school together. To look at Beth, you'd think she was just another of those famous butterflies but she joined up with the Canadian Women's Army Corps not long after it was formed. And my dad just smiled and said, I hope you got bus fare home because you were supposed to be 21 to join. She was telling me all about it only last week. I had a card that my Sunday school teacher had given me with my birth date on it and I, my girlfriend changed the year on it. Being sworn in, a pretty solemn occasion. I don't remember joining the Army until the woman across the desk said, congratulations, you're now a member of the Canadian Women's Army Corps. And that was when I knew of it. <laughs> I don't remember the rest of it. The issuing of uniforms and equipment one of the first big thrills a girl gets when she joins up. When I joined the Army, I got the first new pair of shoes I'd ever had, the first clothes that I wore first that were hand-me-downs. I got to sleep in a bed all by myself for the first time in my life, even though I was too scared to go to sleep in case I fell out, but because I was in the top bunk. But uh, it, 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 was, it was wonderful as far as I was concerned. Showers and a dab of powder in the ablutions room, as they call it. Then her first morning of drill. A bit hard at first on legs not used to it, a bit confusing for brains not accustomed to split-second reactions to spoken commands. Actually, you know, it uh, wasn't that bad because we had grown up obeying orders. You, you didn't talk back to your parents, you did what you were told, and you did it when you were told. As the war was going on, they were starting to realize labor shortages and uh, by allowing women to enter the army and take over some of the non-combat roles, it freed up men to go overseas or go to the front. But hills, holes and water to the contrary, they both came through smiling. Although Beth said the instructor hated losing his hat and a bit of his dignity. When she passed her driver's test, Beth took over a full-time job from a man, releasing him for a more important job, perhaps overseas. Girls of all the services are doing this every day. I made 90 cents a day and my, that's what our pay was. And so that made it just about $30 a month. And out of that $30, I sent $25 home to my mom, and $20 of it went to my sister who was taking her nurse's training, and mom kept $5 of it. And that, I had everything for free. $5 was a whole lot of money for me to spend for a month. The message I remember most was when I got the uh, list of uh, missing in action and both my brothers were listed on it. A few days after that, 
I got letters written by nurses for my brother telling me that they were each in a different hospital, but they were in a hospital and they both recovered and came home. Well, we had to polish the floor and we could polish it. You could get a shine on it so you could almost see your face in it. It was very slippery to walk on, but you could really make it shine, yes. I never went back to the farm. I uh, got a, a suite here in Calgary and stayed in Calgary. I never did go back to the farm. Part of the reason why we did this exhibit was to show the women's side of World War II. Um, and so the Women's Army Corps was a huge part of that. Um, I think it was something like over 21,000 women in Canada had joined the Corps over the course of the war. So that was a, hu like a huge uh, you know, labor force that allowed Canada to do a lot more than it could have without them. And they did prove themselves to be highly competent and very hard workers and, you know, did amazing jobs. It was the best four years of my life. I did so many firsts. And first time I rode on a train, first time I it was so far away from home I couldn't walk back. It, it showed the, the whole world that women could do things that nobody ever expected them to do before. And they could do them, and they could do them very well. I have a group of friends that, I, that have been my friends since 1942, 43. And we used to have reunions every other year. We'd have one here in Calgary one year, and the next year would be in Edmonton. And we used to get people from all over the world, like they'd come from Australia, or England, and the ex CWCs, wherever they were, to come to the reunions. And until it got to the point where they were too old to travel. And, uh, so then we had to drop the reunions. But we still keep in touch by telephone. Mm -hmm.